Hey guys, it's Layla. Today we'll speak about a pending moment. Starting with supratentorial ependymoma. Ependyma is the epithelial lining of the brain ventricle, so the ventricular system, and it is involved in the production of cerebrospinal fluid. So in the supratentorial area, you are going to have ependymomas of the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle. Supratentorial ependymomas occur less frequently than infratentorial ones, and they are mostly extraventricular in origin, unlike the posterior fossa or the infratentorial ependymomas. These tumours are slow-growing and they are benign. If they do recur after treatment, they usually tend to recur around the same area where they initially occurred, and they are more frequent in children. Infratentorial ependymomas, they usually arise from the floor of the fourth ventricle. This is more common in children than supratentorial ependymomas. There are three grades of ependymomas. You have grade one, which is mixopapillary ependymoma and subependymoma. Grade 2 is the classic ependymoma and grade 3 is the anaplastic ependymoma which is more aggressive and least differentiated. Patients usually present with headaches, seizures and focal neurological deficits depending on the location of the tumour in contrast to infratentorial ones which usually just present with hydrocephalus. For diagnoses, you can use CT, which is preferred for the visualization of calcification or hemorrhage. In this picture, you can see an ependymoma, a supratentorial one, in the right lateral ventricle. An MRI is the most preferred method of diagnoses. Here again, you can see an ependymoma in the right lateral ventricle. You have T1 and T2 weight images. In T1 weight images, the abnormality appears hyper-intense or iso-intense, which means it is darker like a black hole compared to the grey matter of the brain. In T2 weight images, it is iso-intense or hyper-intense, so it is lighter compared to the grey matter. You can remember them as black and white. So T1 is going to be black compared to the normal tissue and T2 is going to be white compared to the normal tissue. X-rays and nuclear medicine can also be used. For example, here you can see an ependymoma in the fourth ventricle, infratentorial, and here you can see an ependymoma in the left lateral ventricle. This is a contrast-enhanced T1 weight image, which is preferred over a T2 weight image. And uh, here you can see a mass effect. A mass effect is when the growing tumour, in this case ependymoma, is obstructing the ventricular system and this pressure causes an increased intracranial pressure and a mass effect. But any mass in general in the brain can cause a mass effect, whether it is hemorrhage, a hematoma, or a tumour. For treatment, total resection is obviously optimal. If not possible, then you can go with radiosurgery, radiotherapy, or chemotherapy. Let's go through what we learned today. So we have supra and infratentorial ependymomas. The ependema is the lining of the ventricular system. So if you have a tumor there, it's going to cause hydrocephalus and obstruct the ventricular system. It is more common in children and infra is more common than supra. Supratentorial affects the lateral and the third ventricles and infratentorial affects the fourth ventricle. Symptoms are headaches, 
neurological deficits and seizures for supra and hydrocephalus for infra. Supratentorial ependymomas are more amenable to complete surgical excision, but infra is not because of the delicate structures surrounding it in the posterior cranial fossa. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.